Hi, welcome to my tutorial about Camera Raw. Today I'm going to show you how to use Camera Raw with your Camera Raw files. So we'll open one up. And then you'll notice that you have some settings here at the top. Okay, This is your zoom tool, your select tool, and this is your white balance tool. Okay, you use this to find your mid-tone gray in the picture, and it'll automatically find it and adjust it depending on which is your uh, white balance. However, I'm just going to define this one myself by using the temperature here in the basic panel. And then your exposure you don't want to mess with unless it's really underexposed or overexposed. If you're trying to bring back some blown out areas, then you want to use your recovery slider. Or if there's a really dark area, you want to fill that with the fill light. You don't want to mess too much with your contrast or your brightness sliders, but instead you just want to use your blacks to bright, kind of bring that back in. <clears throat> you do not want to go below the default of 5 on your blacks. Okay. Now this panel is the tone curve. It, you have the parametric which you can adjust using your the arrows on the keyboard and it's really hard. Um, you can use the point curve, which has some presets on there. I kind of like to use the strong contrast. You can see how it adjusted that. If you don't want any tone curve, you just set it to linear, and it'll just make it flat. Let's go back to strong contrast. Here, this is the sharpening detail. Now, you need to make sure that you read this part down here that it needs to be 100% to see what is going on. So let's zoom into 100%. Okay. And so if you hold down the option button and then slide, you'll see that it turns gray and it gets kind of grainy. You see that? The radius, whenever you're sharpening, you do not want to go above two, but one is a, is a common one and where you want to stay. The detail is what it is detail. It shows how much detail is going to be in your, in your sharpening. So we'll, we'll keep it about there. And then masking, See how the screen is white? That means everything is being sharpened all at once. So if we slide it, you start to see some black coming to there. Wherever it is black is where it's going to be masked out and it won't be sharpened. So we'll do that. Okay? As you can see, it's not as sharp as around <clears throat> as it is around some lines. Alright? Luminance kind of blurs things out. Do you see how I did that? Okay. This is great when you want to do like airbrushing on faces and things like that you can blur the, the picture out a little bit. So let's go back to full view here go to the next panel and these are your your different colors in your picture. You have hue, you have your saturation and you have your luminance. Okay. My blue shirt looks pretty good however I'm not a fan of it and so I'm just going to whiten that out and see how I did that is perfect. And then you can adjust these to kind of bring in some colors here. So like the red doors that are behind me, I kind of want them to be a little more vibrant. But you got to be careful because those same colors are in my face and you'll uh, end up enhancing those as well. So you have to be careful unless you create a, another smart object for the same picture. Split toning also has your hue and saturation that will affect the whole color of the picture. Your lens correction, this is fringe, so if you zoom in on, on your picture, and you'll notice that sometimes there's kind of like a blue going around or maybe a yellow or a red. And so if you just kind of go opposite of those, you'll see that it fixes and removes the fringe. Okay. If we go back to full view here, the, we'll then see the lens vignetting. So if we bring that in a little bit, you'll notice that it kind of burns the corners around here. Your midpoint is how close it gets to the subject or the center of the picture. Okay, um, these are some effects that are new in CS5. Like you have your grain amount if you are into that sort of thing. And then post cropping. If you're to crop your picture and 
after you've done the vignette, this is where post cropping comes in where you can increase the amount of the vignette that is on there. Okay, but I don't plan on cropping the picture, so I won't need any of that on here. And then these are camera calibration files that allow you to add in um, like JPEG quality and color processing. The idea with Camera Raw is that you process the picture yourself without the camera doing any of that work for you. Okay, so this is a, a good thing about Camera Raw is that you are able to process all of that yourself. So now that you've kind of gone through all these tabs and you've adjusted your picture how you like it, you want to, if you want it to open as a smart object in Photoshop, you want to click on the link at the bottom and then select this checkbox that says Open in Photoshop as Smart Objects. This will allow you to toggle back and forth from Photoshop and your Camera Raw file. Okay. Now something that's cool about Camera Raw, if you want to crop your picture right away, is that you can crop it and you can come back to it and have it uncropped as if it were never cropped before. As in Photoshop, you would lose that information. Okay. So now we'll open our object. And there it is in Photoshop. Now if you want to do some airbrushing or blur the background out more, then what you want to do is you want to right click and you want new smart object via copy, which breaks the link between the original one. And then you can come in here and you can edit it however you would normally. So I wanted to blur all this. And then I would go in and mask it out. So you can kind of see a difference in there. But you want to make sure that you create a smart copy for your picture. Okay, so there's Camera Raw right there for you, and as you can tell, without using any Photoshop tools or actions or features to get your picture enhanced, you can do it right in Camera Raw. But this is Camera Raw. If you have any more questions, you can Google them, or if you know me personally, you can ask me. Thank you.